just a couple of days after Llama 4 launch, there has been some serious allegations about benchmark hacking. In fact, we have got a local Llama post that refers to a Chinese forum site where some person from Llama or Meta said that they've submitted the resignation because there have been a lot of problems with Llama 4 post training. So in this video, I'm going to just break it down for you. But before we even see all these things, just wanted to just show you the benchmarks in and itself. Artificial Analysis, a separate team that ran independent evals on Llama 4. And then they figured out that most of Meta's claim hold true. Now, the problem is not just most of Meta claims hold true. So Artificial Analysis has got an index that is called Artificial Analysis Index. And it is for non-reasoning models, not like your DeepSeek R3. And the Intelligent Index, if you see here, Llama 4 Maverick is just right next to DeepSeek V3 GPT-40. So it is even better than Claude 3.7 Sonnet if you have not enabled the thinking mode. Now, the problem with this is like the moment you see this, you would know that, oh, this is a great model. But the problem is that this index is just a combination of existing benchmarks, MMLU Pro, GPQA Diamond, Humanities Last Exam from Scale AI, Live Code Bench, SciCode, AIME, Math 500. So what Artificial Analysis Intelligence Index is that it takes all these metrics, ran Llama 4 across it, got the scores and then averaged it out or created an index out of it. The only catch here is that, that they also found out that Llama 4 sometimes did not give the right way of output. Like uh, if you are doing a multi-choice question, then you would want the model to give you the right answer. Like for example, one note from our evils is that we note that our results from multi-choice evils, MMLU Pro, GPQ or Diamond, are materially lower than Meta's claimed result. The key driver of the difference appears to be that Scout and Maverick frequently fail to follow our answer formatting. So they, on, they ask for a format like this and then it did not give. And when it doesn't give, you can't use a code to compare the result. Uh, so this was the only concern that they had, but otherwise this pretty much holds true. But the bigger problem is not whether the model is holding true to whatever Meta said. In fact, a lot of people have complained that this model doesn't seem to do good. So we do not know if it is a configuration issue that people have got whenever they deployed the model or if it is actually a bad model. One another big concern that this Llama 4 has got, got is if you go to the leaderboard, you can see Llama 4 Maverick 0326 Experimental and even Meta confirmed in their blog post that the Llama 4 offers best in class performance to cost ratio with an experimental chat version. So this is not the same version that you and I have access to like the local model. I mean, we don't use a local model per se because we don't have enough compute. But even then, this was a separate model that Meta submitted for LMSYS Arena, the chatbot arena and released a different model. So this is the beginning of the controversies. And then the serious allegation here is the English translation of the Chinese post. So despite repeated training efforts, that internal models performance still fails a short of open source state of the art benchmarks lagging significantly behind. Company leadership suggested blending test sets from various benchmarks during post training process. For people who do not know this, every time a large language model goes through some kind of a training, so it has some kind of a pre-training. So that is the first one. Once the pre-training is finished, there is some kind of a post training that is happening. And uh, this is the place where the model, you know, gets to become like the chat model, the instruct model and all sort of things. And now what somebody had suggested, like we don't know if it is true or false. Like, for example, take a popular benchmark like MMLU Pro. OK, now if you take this MMLU Pro, it has got two set. One is a train set and then two is a test set. OK. So now what somebody has suggested is take the test set question and answer and then train this model during the post training phase. So during post training. Now this will intentionally inflate this model's ability to predict this right answers for this particular benchmark. Now what does it mean? It means it will increase the value in which it can score this particular model. So it will increase the benchmark. Thus overall increasing the model's performance only in benchmark, not in real life. That's what this person is saying here, aiming to meet the targets across various metrics and produce a presentable result like double quotes. 
Failure to achieve this goal by end of April deadline would lead to dire consequences following yesterday's release of Llama 4. Many users on X and Reddit have already reported extremely poor real-world result. See, the problem with poor real-world test result is we do not know if it is the configuration issue or if it is actually the model is bad. So that's something that we have to keep in mind. As someone currently in academia, I find this approach utterly unacceptable. And I don't know how this person is in academia and then they're working for Meta, maybe like, you know, I don't know. Consequently, I've submitted my resignation and explicitly requested that my name be excluded from the technical report of Lama. Notably, the VP of AI at Meta also resigned for similar reasons. Now, if you see Meta as a company, there is two different divisions that handle uh, large language models or AI. One is Meta AI, which is like the Jan Likun side of things. The other one is what they call as fair. Okay. So now really a person resigned. So this person, if you go see here, Joel Pinyau resigned after eight years and she was VP of AI research at Meta. Now we don't know what the original blog poster here is saying is that the person who resigned was VP of fair while VP of generative AI, Ahmed Al Dahli is not very much resigned and uh, Jan Likun is also part of this organization. I guess I'm not sure exactly which organization he is part of. So there is like a lot of things going behind the scene about, you know, this particular post that came on some Chinese forum. And all we know is somebody is claiming or, you know, trying to whistle blow, blow the whistle about Lama 4 training had some serious allegations, especially mixing the benchmark test data set during the post training process, just to make the result presentable. But the thing is, if you happen to use Lama 4, did you feel that it is a good model? It is not a good model because from a lot of early result that we see across online, this doesn't look like a competitive model. And also with all the complications of the license, I think people would be much happier to go use DeepSeek rather than trying to use another model like Llama 4. Let me know what you think about it. We know benchmark hacking has been happening for quite a while, but if this kind of thing coming out of a big lab, then it is uh, like something very serious. And uh, I'm, I'll be surprised if that is the case because you know, everybody knows that people are going to use it against their own internal benchmarks, have their own test. So I don't think like Meta would be dumb enough to release a model, but you never know with big tech what is happening. Let me know what you think about it. See you in another video. Happy prompting.